This is Dr. Michael. There seems to be a lot of question between what is alkaline water, what is alkalized water, is there a difference, why do the pH strips not work on this water, why do the drops work on this water, so here's a brief explanation. The question becomes, what is the difference between alkaline water and versus alkalized water? The short answer for this question is, this is a chemical change, this is an electrical change. If you were to use your pH strips, like for a pool, and they test the chemicals and the water comes out at, say, 4.5, well, with a pH of 4.5, you would then add either calcium or magnesium or some like that to increase the alkalinity. What the pH strips, if you will, are looking for is they're actually known as chem strips, which means they're looking for a chemical, com chemical composition change. If you take the water from the SD501 and you use a pH strip, your before and after will be the same. If you take any type of table water, whatever, other machines, and you're getting a change in the chem strips, it means that you added the calcium and magnesium, and now you get an 8.5 water because of the chemical change in the water. That is therefore by definition to be truly alkaline water by all scientific standards that we use today. However, when you start to compare this to alkalized water, What's going on is there is an electrolysis process, and basically it's shocking the water. It takes an enormous level of energy to do a process that is called the disassociation of water. And you can Google that. Basically, it's the process by which you take water and you lend it to hydrogen ion and a hydroxyl ion. The hydroxyl gives you a free electron that you can use to, to be a free radical scavenger. But when this process happens, basically there's an array which has a negative side and a positive side. This will attract the hydrogen ions. The hydroxyls will come over here. Well, when this happens, because they're so unstable, what they will do is they will instantly convert to H2, which is hydrogen dissolved in water. So then you end up with an H2 molecule and a couple of hydroxyls. Because this ratio changes electrically, you'll get a rise in your pH. There's no chemicals added. There's not, they're taken or added to the water. It is strictly a requirement of power, which is where this unit comes in. If you look at it as a question of power times amperage times the surface area of the plates, that'll give you what's called a PEU, which is potential electrolysis units. If you take 230 watts times 2.5 amps times 466 square inches, you get a PEU of 267,950 from an SD501. I recommend if you want to look and compare these other units and what they're trying to do, um, alkaline water plus is a great website. It's actually a competitor's website and it proves power output. Most of the units there have 110 watts times a half amp and the standard plate size is 117 square inches which gives you a PEU of 6,435 or approximately 2.4 percent of this power. Because it doesn't have enough power to create the disassociation of water they have to add calcium 
and or magnesium to change the water supply. When that happens, you then run the risk of all the dangers that are associated with alkaline water because if you keep adding these things into the system, they can in fact affect blood pH. That's why people say, oh, alkaline water can be dangerous, you got to be careful not to do too much, you might alkalize the system. If this builds up in the bloodstream, you will change your blood pH and that can create a lot of health issues. Alkalized water, on the other hand, doesn't add any chemicals. It's not going to stress, for instance, the stomach when you drink it. The stomach is going to be looking for this to neutralize it. It is not looking for this right here. So as soon as this water is absorbed into the body, the charge is absorbed, your pH becomes essentially neutral. The hydroxyl ions will continue to go through the aquaporin and that will flush out the toxins within the cell so you'll get an alteration of the intracellular pH which is removing cellular met metabolic byproducts such as urea, uh, urea, ammonia, CO2, things like that. So that's the essential difference between alkaline and alkalized water.